I loved how they were talking about how there's kind of this, we've all unified and we've all agreed that talking negatively about your body is what we do. Yeah, it's, it's socially just like acceptable. a part of womanhood. Yeah. So if somebody it's is normal to feel it's bad, it's normal. It's mm-hmm. normal to feel bad. Like our bodies first and people second. Like, yeah, that's messed up. Mm, are we bodies first and people second? Friend of our show, Lisa Valentine Clark, is trying to change that narrative through her podcast, The Lisa Show, from reclaiming food and nutrition to how to talk to kids about their bodies. Since January of this year, she has interviewed many women all on the topic of body image and she's joining me in studio to talk about what she's learned from this really powerful series. So good to see you. Thank you for having me. You slip into girlfriend mode so fast with this lady that I'm trying to stay buttoned up and professional and stick to topic, Brooke, stick to topic. (laughs) But what inspired you, Lisa, to lean into the topic of body image? It's a big one. It's a huge thing and uh, I think I just looked around doing the Lisa Show podcast and and I'm always curious as to like what people want to talk about, right? And across the board, it doesn't matter uh, where you come Come from what size you are, uh, what your family dynamic. Everybody obsesses to some degree about their body image. It's it's an epidemic. What was your relationship with this topic prior to setting out and exploring it and cracking it open and hopefully making some progress? Well, I I thought I had a pretty good balance, yeah. right? And I think I underestimated, in fact, I know I underestimated the amount of white noise that there is surrounding this issue, mm. that I was being influenced in a lot more um, negative ways than I had anticipated. And that's what's been so great about doing this, you know, entire body image series. So, you know, 12 different episodes about why mm-hmm. and, and to kind of get to the source of it, because we need to talk about these kinds of things yeah. together in order to make a, a a huge change. I'm curious to know more about that white noise because I, I'm not going to claim exemption, although I've recognized I'm a little bit of a unicorn when it comes to this topic. My body's always just been a neutral blessing. And, and I looked... That's, yeah, it's awesome. It's rare. And, yes. and, and I remember when uh, our Studio 5 health contributor, Melanie Douglas, retired after almost 15 years in that role. And we had you know, hundreds of viewers writing in and sharing their stories and how Melanie had helped them along their personal journey. And I think that was a moment for me. This was just like three or four years ago where I sat up and thought, oh, this is a big deal to confident, secure women, mothers, grandmothers. Like you said, it affects so many people. So when you say white noise, what do you mean by that? Meaning that it's everywhere. You know, we also like to blame social media and that's a huge part of it, right? Sure. But also the messaging that we get just from what it means to be a woman or what it means to live Mm. in the world or just the fact of the things that we talk about and how we talk about it. So um, as exhibited in that clip, we, it, the way that women bond is by saying things that you don't like about your body. Mm-hmm. Like even just socially, you would never go into a group of women and say, you know what, I really like my legs. Like, cause they'd be like, well, who are you, right? Yeah. It is this bonding <laughs> opportunity for us yeah. to sort of have this negative talk. And then with social media, I mean, we didn't grow up with it, but our kids are, so I kind of saw, you know, half and half, like growing up and trying to raise kids with the internet and without. And, Mm -hmm. you know, the studies have come out to see, especially young women are absolutely bombarded with messaging and it's leaving them depressed and anxious, Yeah. right? So that white noise is everywhere. It's in media, it's in the job market, it is socially, it's in relationships. You know, we we didn't talk about, like our grandmothers didn't know what their friends looked like in bikinis and things like that. Or know what their friends look like filtered. Or exactly. That's another layer to it. It's this right. unattainable, like, false. And sense. as the technology comes up and as it changes, we have not adapted socially. Yeah. So, you know, I wonder if it's going to get to this point where, you know, we used to drive without seatbelts. Women used to smoke when they were pregnant. And we're like, how can you do that? That's crazy, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. I wonder if the same ways that we talk about our bodies, the way we objectify women, um, is going to be looked at like that in, like the, how did we in ever? the future. How did, how did you do that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, well, after... After months of researching and interviewing, Lisa has landed on three key and specific takeaways about women and body image. We're going to talk about those when we come back. Juicy stuff. Juicy stuff. Oh, yeah. 